Well, hey, good morning. It is Friday. Yeah, I had a series of texts with my wife last night regarding mediation next week. Apparently she can't trust me or tell me anything about her life because I talked to his ex-girlfriend. communication that would make the mediation process easier or more understanding between the two of us, she will not do. She will not talk to me. I don't get it. It's crazy. All because I talked to his ex. She just keeps coming back to, will you mediate next week? Will you mediate next week? Will you mediate next week? And I just asked the question, like, what's going on? What's happening? Why the time crunch? She won't tell me anything. And it's weird. I even reminded her, I said, you know, we are married and we're best friends and soulmates and unconditionally in love with each other. Talking about this would lead to understanding. No, none of that. It, it's just, will I mediate? Oh, there is another quirky. When I didn't answer her question last night, she sent me a text this morning saying, if I don't answer her, she will go to an attorney tonight and this will be the last I ever speak to her. I mean, severe, like this will be the last I speak to her. All future communications will be through her attorney. Yeah, and part of me is like, Okay, she's clearly done with me. She's been done for months. She wants it, she has a timetable, but she won't talk to me. You know, is it for tax reasons? Is it for moving reasons? She, she, there's no reason for this to not be civil. Like I haven't done, the worst, the worst thing I've done in all this is talk to his ex and change the locks on the house. And when I spoke to my attorney the other day, he said, there's an expectation that when somebody moves out that the locks get changed. That's not a weird, like I didn't do anything wrong really the only, the worst thing I've done, keeping in mind that she cheated on me and broke up with me and destroyed our marriage and has been cruel and selfish in this whole breakup and unkind and disrespectful. The whole thing I did is talk to his ex. I, I don't think I'm a bad person for doing that. I'm just not. But that's the only foothold she has to make me the villain. It's a weird thing to hear though. This will be the last time you speak to me but she's comfortable with it. I think that's the telling thing. She doesn't care. She's done with me. She's discarded me. So if it's the last time we speak, she'll be fine. I don't know what the move is. Maybe I should just be like, all right, get an attorney. Do, you know, speak to an attorney tonight. File the pleadings on Monday. Try and serve me on Tuesday before the end of the year. And let's get it done. <laughs> Good morning. It is Friday around 10 a.m. and I'm headed over to work. I have some cleaning I want to do and maybe get the, the gray mailings touched up, painted, and, and uh, I'd like to bring this home and get them hung. I don't feel good. She makes me feel good. And maybe I just need to get used to it, but that sentiment of, this will be the last you ever hear from me. It's a really extreme sentiment coming from the person who said she was my soulmate, the person that's married to me, the person, the person I've been in love with for the past seven years, the person I didn't do anything to. I didn't end this marriage. She did. So the fact that the separation is going slower than she would like and she's threatening to never talk to me again and only deal with an attorney is extreme because what I told her was, I can't deal with any of this until school ends. School ended last week. This week, yesterday, I met with the mediator. I'm doing what I said I would do, but it's apparently just not fast enough. And after having met with the mediator yesterday, since I wasn't immediately ready to commit to mediation next week, she's threatening me with an attorney. It's the same pattern we've seen over and over again. When it doesn't go her way, she just escalates. She'll see an attorney tonight and never talk to me again. She loves me. <laughs> She loved me. She doesn't love me anymore. That's obvious. And it's it's one of those duality situations again where, where logically I know this is crazy, but my heart is pulled back and forth and torn. It's hard. I am gonna be late for therapy because I've been on the phone nonstop since I got to school. At first with my wife and then with others and then with the mediator and then with my wife again. I am rattled and weird and shaken and 
You know, I, I really tried to temper myself today. I, I know talking to her is bad for me. It makes me upset. It makes me, it makes me adrenalized. And I know I have to see her. I know I have to talk to her and just deal with this. Fuck, I don't even... I talked to her so much today, I don't even know what to tell you right now. She is really tough. She is not... Oh god, I hope it's not a day where I cry through therapy again like last week. She does not feel like the woman I married. There's no softness. There's no kindness. And she'll tell me she did things to be kind. And I don't believe her. She didn't file the divorce petition because I told her it would it would be hard for me. So she waited until now. She did that to be kind. She's all freaked out now because, because of the kindness she dealt me. Everything she's done in this process has been for her and her best interests. So I'm supposed to believe that this one thing, like the dissolution of our marriage, she didn't do that for kindness? I don't believe it. I just don't. And the villain that is his ex, according to her, is crazy. Like, she can't tell me anything. She won't tell me anything about her future because, because I liked his ex's stuff on Instagram. It's insane. She can't trust me. She doesn't trust me because it's very sensitive and I'll get back to him. It's bonkers. I stopped the conversation. I said, we are married. We've been best friends for seven years. We love each other. I said, you, you have trusted me for the whole time. And now because of Instagram likes, you can't trust me anymore. That, that is ridiculous. But that is what it is because I promised I wouldn't like her stuff on Instagram and I broke that promise. And that's why she can't tell me about what's happening with her life. And she'd like to tell me what's going on, but she can't. I called her back after I talked to the mediator to discuss what I thought of the mediator because that's what humans do. So I called her back and I said, I thought the mediator sounded good and we could go with her. And she immediately said, yeah, but I'm stressed about selling the condo. Can you call the realtor on Monday? You know, it wasn't like, good, we've taken this step forward. We're, we're on the right path. It was like, I want more. I want more from you. She's stressed out. She has no money. She's freaked out. She, you know, I'm, I'm bleeding her dry. I'm draining her money because I'm freeloading in the condo that we, that we own together. It's been three and a half months since she broke my heart. It's not like I've been squatting for years. I've been trying to get my life together. I've been trying to recover. I've been trying to be okay. She has no money. It makes her crazy when I think she does have money. She's inhuman. She doesn't want to know me. She doesn't care about me. She does. She just doesn't, she shut it off. I made a comment that she doesn't know about my life. I've said it a few times and finally she was like, what don't I know about your life? And what she doesn't get is she doesn't know everything. She thought maybe like my mom was sick or I'm getting fired or something like that. But just the simple fact that we're not close anymore. We're not like, she doesn't miss any of it. Like I'm, I'm so shut off and gone. It just doesn't effing matter. She just doesn't care. And to have someone be so desperate to be rid of you hurts. And I know I've said it before and I'll probably say it again. And she wants to be friends with me, but I, but I was friends with his ex. I mean, yeah, I liked his ex on Instagram. We follow each other and like posts. And she's afraid anything she tells me, I might go and tell his ex. How does that even compute? Like, how does that make sense? If, if she and I have been married, you know, together for seven years, loving and trusting, like, she might tell me something that I would go and tell his ex, like, why would I do that? It's insane. The whole thing is insane. I think what I'm struggling with right now is this sort of linchpin that is his ex. Everything that's wrong right now is because of me, because I spoke to his ex and everything evil she did. And she's such a villain and she, you know, she's ruining his life and doing all this bad stuff. And it's as if everything else is wiped clean. Like bygones are bygones. Like she broke our vows. She broke up the marriage. She moved out. She cheated on me. She spent like, that's all been forgotten. Ken talked to that's, that, you know, things would be so much more civil if I hadn't done that. Like, we're past everything else. We're past the whole autumn of her not talking about dealing with feelings for him in therapy and the fact that she went on a trip with somebody she had feelings. Like, that's all gone. Now it's just like, I, like, Ken said he wouldn't talk and he talked he broke a promise and there will be no convincing her otherwise. I think that, that's troubling. 
that's her stance. I'm fucking evil because I did that. I could use a hug. I am low and angry. I don't know what to do with all of this. Oh man, I can just feel it. Like she criticized me for reaching out to all her friends. I went into therapy feeling okay-ish. <laughs> and the minute I sat down and started to talk, boom, I lost it. And I lost it for the better part of the whole session. I guess it wouldn't be a normal post-therapy update if I didn't tell you how amazing I think she is. She's, she's just incredible in terms of her, her focus and her attentiveness and thoughtfulness and the way she asks questions and listens and, and the way she loops back around to talk about things that are worth revisiting. Um, she's amazing. I'm so fortunate that I get to talk to her in, in terms of something in my life that helps me get centered and refocus and that it's advice based on on me and what's good for me and not necessarily what she perceives of as good for me. So you know when I'll say something like, you know, I know it shouldn't matter what she thinks about me, but blah blah blah. We'll stop and we'll talk about that and talk about the fact that regardless if I should or shouldn't, it it does matter to me. And why? And what can I do with that? And I wouldn't necessarily put that level of thought into something. And it's really, really helpful. And I wish I could convey to her more the, the depth of my gratitude for how much she's helping me. We talked a lot today about the things that I value, like how I view myself to be versus how I'm being characterized by her or mischaracterized and how it affects me to be represented so wrong or be punished for something, either something I didn't do or something that's so seemingly inconsequential in comparison to what she did to me, but she's explaining them as if they're equivalent. How it's almost laughable that I'm being punished for liking things on Instagram after she broke my heart, broke up our marriage, broke up our family, and has been intensely rough on me for the past three and a half months. Not the same. While I was in there, she texted me, just a follow-up text to say that that she will always love me and care about me, just so I know. Cool. Why are you telling me that? Why do you feel like I should know that now? Coming at the tail of a couple hours of intense conversation today where, where she told me she didn't like who she was for the past seven years, where basically she doesn't like the person she is when she's with me. And whether or not she actually meant it, she said it, and it hit me like a, a shot in the heart. I even gave her the chance to unpack that, you know, to take it back, and she didn't really do that. That was hard. It was a hard day. And then to get a text like that from her, it's just, I don't know what that is. I do, like, I don't know if that's, if that's her, just her manipulating me, or if talking to me a bit today reminded her that I'm not a fucking villain. It doesn't matter. We're getting divorced. She would tell me if she wanted me to know things, and she doesn't, so she's punishing me for Instagram likes. Yep, because that's the worst thing I've done to her. I am going for Ethiopian food tonight at 6.45, but I haven't eaten anything today, so I think I'm gonna go get some frozen yogurt. I just feel deflated. My chest feels caved in. A big day where I got nothing done. I've just dealt with emotional relationship stuff all day. And the mediation we have set up for next week falls during my lesson time for horses. So I'm gonna have to forego my horse lesson for mediation. That sucks, because I really like riding. <laughs> so during the session today, I was upset. You know, struggling to express myself and just talk about like the loss and the feel, like, like it's hard, it's really hard. And she, she just paused at one point and asked this great question where she said, and why are we talking to her on the phone again? <laughs> and it was such a great summation of things. You're such a wreck, why, why were you talking to her? And I tried to explain it in terms of knowing what's coming, you know, knowing that we're gonna go to mediation and divide up our lives and stuff. And I'm trying to temper myself because I know I have to see her. I know I'm gonna have to spend time with her. And it's hard every time. So I thought I could reach some baseline of civility. I think it's strange that she texted me kind things after the fact. She finally texted me a thanks for agreeing to go to mediation, basically. And then she she texted that she'll always love and care about me. And that's a hard one to hear today because I don't think it's true. 
I don't think she loves and cares about me. I don't think she thinks about the time we were married. I don't think, I just don't believe it. Nothing that's happened in the past three and a half months would lead me to believe that she loves and cares about me. I don't care how excited you are about your new person. Don't end it like this. You know, so I get that text and I want to believe, my God, in my heart, I want to believe that she'll always love and care about me and, and hold on to that and be fixated. But everything she does, every way she treats me is cruel. It's unkind or with indifference. In what way has she shown caring about me? Involvement in my life? Curiosity about what I'm up to? Telling me what's up with her life? No, she's punishing me. She's punishing me for Instagram likes. It's so bizarre. A seven year relationship undone by photo likes on Instagram. So what we talked about today at therapy was that basically she doesn't trust me anymore. She, she won't trust me with her, what's going on in her life. And the sense of, okay, so, so she doesn't trust me. And it, it's such a basic thing that I need to think about. What does it matter if she doesn't trust me? I mean, it matters in that I'm a person worthy of trust. In our relationship, I am a trustworthy person. So it hurts me to be thought of as not trustworthy because it's one of my core, core things. When I commit to somebody, I am fully committed. I don't cheat or wander or philander or like nothing. I am faithful, I am loyal to a fault. So to be thought of so negatively is painful, it hurts. And to be thought of so negatively by the person that knows you best, I think that's what it is. The person that's had the most access to your heart and to your brain, the person who knows you, have them think less of you is devastating. She's not right. And I think she knows she's not right. Or maybe she doesn't know now, but someday she will. So the work I have to do to make her not trusting me just feel like, okay, that's not an overnight thing. That's a whole nother onion skin of separation. Oh, it's not about lust or wanting a relationship or things like that, you know, the, the more, I'm not going to say superficial things, but the things that can fall away when someone develops an interest in someone else, as she has done, but the core things like trustworthiness, which regardless of her romantic feelings towards me, should be intact because I am worthy of trust. You know, I'm a good person. To have that be gone is significantly harder. But, you know, she sends a text like she did, I'll always love and care about you. And it does soften me just a little. It just puts a little, little dent in the armor. It's hard when someone has access to your heart like that. Thanks for listening. Hi, what a day filled with heartache. I'm taking the dog for a walk before I go out for Ethiopian food tonight with a friend. And my heart is heavy and my eyes sting. To be honest, when you cry as much as I've cried, they sting. <laughs> And here's the funny thing. So I had a whole bunch of phone calls. I, I, I spoke with, with my wife today about the fact that she doesn't want me. She wants to be with him. She doesn't love me. She wants a divorce. She wants to sell her conch. All of that, all of that. It all got reinforced today. But I know all these things, but it got reinforced. So I feel more sad tonight, feel more lonely. I was watching YouTube videos before about travel and I got sad at the fact that she doesn't want to travel with me anymore. And I so enjoyed traveling with her. The brain is funny like that. Nothing's changed. I just got reminded concretely she doesn't want me and, uh, and I feel more heartbroken. It sucks. You know, I do better when I don't talk to her. So now I will have to go through a few days of recovery and then I'll have mediation when I actually file the divorce pleadings and definitely get reminded of the fact that she doesn't want to be with me. It gets no easier, my friends. <laughs> it doesn't. When you're the one who gets left, it sucks. Even when you've done nothing wrong and you know you're a good person and you know, desirable and everyone tells you, oh, you're so great, somebody's gonna snatch you up. It still sucks to get left. You know, people are like, oh, don't take it personally. It's personal. She doesn't want me. It's personal. Even if she's broken, even if she's abnormal, it hurts me to be left by her. That's where I'm at tonight.